there. He's been dead four days. Y'all say four. Four. At this point, he was legally dead. To the Jew. To the Jew. They would wait until the fourth day after death to make sure you were dead. And after the fourth day, there's two things that took place. Physically, legally, on the fourth day, they would pronounce you legally dead. Also, they believed the Pharisees, not the Sadducees. That's why the Sadducees were Sadducees. The Pharisees believed that the spirit hovered around the body for three days and then it left. So spiritually, there's no chance of bringing him back because the spirit's gone. Legally, he's already dead. He's legally pronounced dead. So Jesus arrives when he's there and there's professional mourners. They're crying and weeping and boo-hooing. The body's been prepared for burial. It's wrapped up in grave clothes. He's inside and the body's already begun to stink. You see, it seems hopeless. Some of y'all here right now are thinking, if God had been there, I wouldn't be in this hopeless situation. And God says, hold on there, home slice. I'm getting ready to blow your mind. I'm going to show you something that you'll never believe could even happen. I'm going to resurrect something dead in your life. You're going to go, huh? This is already a legal thing. It's already done. It's already, it's already spiritually. I feel like it's over. And God says, hold on. You haven't given me a chance to work. I could have stopped it before it happened. But if I stopped it before it happened, you would have said, God, you're good to me. But that's about as far as it would go. Now you're going to be able to say more than just God is good to me. You're going to say, oh, praise God. Look how powerful and mighty our God is. He is awesome. He can even raise the dead things in my life. So, so here we go. Let's go. Let's move on. Number four. God is compassionate. <laughs> and he cares for us. The Bible says this is one of my brothers sitting down there. I won't mention his name. But his initials were Patrick Baker. <laughs> if ever we get to the, if ever get to the, if ever we go to a uh, detention center, say so y'all got a sermon ready, and he'll go, "Yep, my favorite one, Jesus will." I thought about you, brother. My fact, I even, I even just when my heart went to you, I thought I said, "Touch him, Lord." But I'm using the sermon. <sighs> Jesus will. Now, when Jesus saw her weeping, he was deeply moved in his spirit. Jesus knew he was going to raise him. Jesus already knew that, this, that, that Lazarus was coming back. But he also knew that the circumstances surrounding it was actually causing dysfunction in the family. So, he asked where have they laid him. He knew, but he asked him. And then when he gets to the graveyard, when he sees his sisters tore up, he weeps with them. Don't you think you got a God of sticks and stone that does not understand? Don't think that you ain't got a God that knows what's going on in your life. You got a God that can handle what you're going through. When He sees you, when you get going through something and you feel like you're about to burst on the inside, He's there. And He will put His arms around you. That song was so awesome. That's what leads up against you and feel your heartbeat. That's what he wants to do. He wants to get so close that you can feel his heartbeat. He wants you to know he's got compassion on you. That you're not just, just something out there. You're not just another. You are his child. And he is your personal savior. And so, so he wants you to know that he cares. And when you weep, he weeps. Matter of fact, well, watch this. God is compassionate cares about us. Watch this. Jesus cried like we cried. He shed tears like we shed tears. He was moved like we were moved. Why? He was hungry. He was sleepy. He was tired. He had to go in, in, in the woods or go in the wilderness and, and get by himself and talk to his father because things sometimes were just so heavy and he didn't want to move without God helping him. But just remember this. We do not serve a distant, despondent God. Listen to me. I wrote it all down there. I don't know if you read it or not. God, God that came down, or God came down, lived like we live so that He could meet us where we are. Job told God, 
when he was suffering. You have no idea the pain I'm going through. You have no idea because there's no days in between us. Me and your God, you don't know sin, you don't know hurt, you don't know hunger. You don't know what it's like to be in need, God. I do. We don't have a days in between us. The word days means a referee. It also means somebody that can reach up with one hand, an arbitrator, and grab God, reach down with the other hand and grab man. There's no days in between us. Now watch this. Here's the text. With one hand he reached up, he was off the earth. With one hand he reached up and grabbed God. With the other hand he reached down and grabbed man. The daysman, the arbitrator, the mediator, the one that knows what it's like to suffer hunger, the one that knows what it's like to suffer pain, the one that knows what it's like to have needs. And he reached out to the Father. And he told the Father, and now the Father knows. You see, Jesus loved Martha, Jesus loved Mary, Jesus loved Lazarus, and he also loves us. So don't be afraid to take, take your concerns to God. Just know, you're not going to aggravate Him. You're, you're not going to ruin His busy day. God always has time for you. So now, number five, we're getting close. See, we're getting really close. We're out of here just about an hour. I mean, five minutes. you got to remember this one. This keeps me anchored. Uh, I sit back and look over life and I think life has not been easy. I look back and think about even just, I mean, trying, trying to work through the ministry and trying to get, get, get set up in ministry and the credentials and all that stuff and the training and the continual training, you know, has not been easy. And just uh, last week I re-enrolled in Lee University and I'm working on a, a counseling degree in Lee University and, and they were about to tear my tater up last week. And so while I tear my tater up, other stuff was going on too, and I was here, and I was there, and I was everywhere. And so the university called me when I was sitting in Starbucks and said, uh, yeah, my office. And they said, uh, Mr. Lynn, you realize you're behind. I said, thank you for that little message. I said, I'm going to stay behind from time to time. It's called pastoring. And they said, okay, Mr. Lynn, we'll talk to you later. Bye. You know, I just went, Lord, here goes again. You know, I think about going through all the deaths in our family and think about all the stuff that's going on and think about stuff now and think about the things going on. And, and, and I see that. And, and what keeps me anchored every time is I remember when life is out of control. God is always in control. When everything around you is falling all apart, when the ship seems to be going under, Jesus can stand on the bow of the ship and say, Peace! Be still. Remember me telling you, not long ago, uh, uh, I was in the house and I was trying to buckle down this piece of plastic because the wind was blowing it. There was a huge piece of plastic. It was a tarp. Huge tarp. And, 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 uh, uh, I shouldn't even be where it was at, but I was where it was at because I couldn't get any help. I'm up there and I'm getting working on this carpet and the wind's blowing so hard. And there was only one nail holding one little corner. And so I'm trying to get this great big carp up and trying to get over without falling over. And I'm working on it and the wind would quit blowing. And I was trying to hammer and couldn't hammer it. And Bethany was looking and said, what are you going to do, Dad? And I kid you not, I heard the Lord say, well, if you stop the sun for uh, Joshua. I said, that's right. And I kid you not. I stood up and said, Peace! Be still! And the wind stopped. And Bethany said, Dad, did you see that? And I said, Yeah, darling, give me a nail. <laughs> <laughs> and so, I put everything back in place, and by the time I put everything back in place, as soon as I hit that last nail, the wind started. I said, thank you, God. That's awesome. I just do it every time? No. He did it that time. You see, let me just show you a little something here. 
Therefore, many of the Jews had come to visit Mary and had seen what Jesus did. They put their faith in him. So watch this. Here's what he did. Watch, watch, watch. And this, this right here is a little, this actually is the sermon. And, and, and you can take these little points here and think about it. Ready? Remember, when life's out of control, God's always in control. First, <coughs> he has interest in your problem. Where have you laid when the, when, the, when the axe head failed, the prophet said, oh, where did it go down? To Moses, what are we going to do when we get before favor? And he says, what you got in your hand? And you say, see, God's interested in your problem. And so, God already knew where he was at, but he was involving them in this whole process. And he wanted them to see the majesty of the power of God in the middle of total chaos. So, there's interest in your problem. God's interested in your problem today. Do you know that? He is so interested. And you know what he's saying? He's saying to you right now, some of you right now, you're hearing it in your head as I speak. That's a problem, God, and, and I need you to help me with it. And so God says, let's get down to business and see what the real problem is. This is what he said. What's the real problem? Let's work this out. So, if he's interested, Number two, there's an invitation. Roll away the stone. I'll get that in just a minute. Roll away the stone. He invited them in. Number three, he was involved. He was empowering. The Bible says that he stood at the tomb after rolled away the stone and he hollered with a loud voice. Lazarus! Come forth! Now before he did, he said, Lord, I know you. Thank you for hearing me. I know you hear me, but I'm doing this for them. And he calls that his name. And of course, first time I've heard this, I thought it was awesome. I've heard it a hundred thousand times, but some of y'all may not have ever heard it before. You know why he called Lazarus' name when he got the graveyard and just said, come forth? He called Lazarus' name because if he just hollered, come forth, everybody would come out their grave. And then they blessed him. They blessed him. Lazarus didn't just walk out. If you can just imagine. When somebody died, they were wrapped in grave clothes. Their face was wrapped in a napkin. And wrapped. So they actually looked like a mummy. So that's just, that's just didn't come out and go, I'm here. Can you imagine? I can hear it now. It was all like this. Some of y'all will be happy if God just got to that point in your problem. But you know what? God will not keep you here. He just looked at him and said, Loose him. And let him go. When God comes in on the scene, He's not just going to help you with your problem. He's going to invest in you. He's going to show you something more powerful than you ever could imagine. Matter of fact, he's going to help heal that broken heart. Loosen and let him go. Heal that broken heart. Loosen and let him go. Help me understand, God, what's going on. Loosen and let him go. God, I'm stuck in my mind. God, help me. This is where it said. Loosen and let him go. So remember, when life is out of control, God is always in control. And I really am getting ready to close. Listen. I told you seven points. So here's number five again. <laughs> just, just a little summary. What does it mean to us today that God's always in control no matter how things look? Sometimes bad things happen to good people for the glory of God. Did you know that? Mama had all that heart problem. And the doctor said, I mean, she'd been going through this for years. And she'd never had a heart attack. And then on the night Bill Clinton was elected. And I'm not saying that's why, please. I just remember that because that was what happened. She started having chest pains. By the time they got to the hospital and watched it, said, he'll be okay. When they got to the green bullet check and said, no, 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 no. And so they did uh, some scans on her heart and came in and showed Mama her heart beating. 
And when it was bleeding, there was an aneurysm in mama's heart at the bottom, the size of a lemon. And they said, Miss Lenton, you should not even be here. Your heart should have blown. Mama was very upset to start with, but he said, we got the technology now, we can fix this, if you'll let us. And so we signed the papers. And she had her fourth open heart surgery, and they fixed an aneurysm. And Mama said, I, 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 I can't fathom. Number one, why I'm still living, and I can't fathom why this happened. And I can't fathom why God didn't just let it burst. I said, Mama, it's going to wind up being a testimony. And sure enough, there were so many people blessed with that testimony. Yesterday, I had a guy working on my phone. My phone is about gone again. And the guy worked on my phone, and if I was a pastor, he said, <coughs> pray for me, if you will. He said, the only thing I got a problem with is my son. He's 16 months old, and they're saying that he's got cystic fibrosis. And I said, well, can I tell you about my son? He said, I'm all ears. And I began to tell him how God, how Daniel, the city had cystic fibrosis, and how God healed that boy. And at 17 years old, when they said he'd be dead, he wouldn't come in third in the state wrestling tournament. I said then, at 21, he was a Bloomer County deputy. By 22 or 23, he was the youngest drug enforcement officer in the state. And I said just recently, he went to Afghanistan six times. You tell me God ain't good. And he said, God's good. You see, some things, bad things happen to you, but it's for the glory of God. I'm closing. Learn from other people's experiences <coughs> so that God won't have to send you through all those experiences yourself. <laughs> Amen. I've rather learn from yours than mine. Okay. Got him. All right. It's never too late. It's not over until God says it's over. God's always in control. Delay does not mean denial. And whatever God permits in your life, He has His purpose wrapped in. Okay? Number six. We're closing. You see, you need to start getting more shouting as you see the numbers get higher. Okay, because that tells me you got it. If you ain't got it, we'll go back to one to start over. We got it. Yeah. So do we got it? Yeah. Ooh. 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 Hey, uh, <laughs> okay. You're still going to go back to number five. <laughs> number six, we have a part to play in our miracle. Every time. God had to get through my head. You have a part to play in your miracle. God showed me something a little different about this. He said, take away the stone. Watch this. He was saying, of course, you have a part. Faith without works is dead. You have to put feet on your prayers. Watch this. This is what the Lord showed me. I really hadn't thought of this way. When he told them to roll away the stone, listen carefully. He was telling them to remove our man-made barriers. Why? Wow. The stone was a man-made barrier in between the miracle, you, and God. Some of us have built man-made barriers between us. So for our safety, for what we think is our protection. Maybe it's an attitude. Maybe it's a, 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 a relationship. Maybe it's whatever. But we, we, we put this barrier between us to protect us. And God says, if you want a miracle, move the barrier. Get out of the way. So what? Watch this. You do what you can do, and God will do what you can't do. Here I'm closing. Number seven. I'm closing. God is able to do far above what you can ever imagine and think. Tell us you're ready to play something. Play some Lazarus, get out of there. And when he does spoke, he cried with loud voice, and Lazarus come forth. John 11, 44, 45 says, And he that did came forth, bound hand and foot with great clothes, and his face was bound about with a napkin. Jesus said unto them, Loose him and let him go. Then many of the Jews which came to Mary and had seen things which Jesus did believe on him. Watch this. When Jesus speaks, your Lazarus will come forth. 
And when you're laughing, you know what Lazarus means? If you look at Lazarus in the Greek, it's Lazarus. But if you look at Lazarus in the Hebrew, it's Eleazar. Eleazar is the Hebrew version of Lazarus. And Eleazar means God is my helper, or without God I can't do it. Lazarus in a predicament without God, he couldn't do it. He was dead. His sisters knew he was dead. He was legally and spiritually dead. But when Jesus speaks, everybody, everybody is going to know. So my question to you today, very simply, what do you need to resurrect in your life? This is your home? Just hope. Maybe you feel like things are out of control and you don't know how to handle it. You don't know how to get things back in control. Things are really wearing you out. You're trying to figure out how to handle those. God has your back. When things are out of control, God is in control. God is able to resurrect the dead things in your life. Trust Him. Trust Him.
Thank you.